Uh, so Change for Children is an Alberta-based uh, international development organization. It has a 42-year history of working in, the, in Latin America and Africa. Uh, we build capacity uh, towards uh, the execution of right, rights-based development. We work in six priority areas, climate change, education, food sovereignty, health, indigenous peoples, and water. We prioritize women and we use a multi-stakeholder approach uh, to innovation that leads to poverty reduction and economic and social development. We work in Latin America and the Caribbean in all six of those priority areas. Our biggest investments are there. We also work in South America and in Africa, and in South Africa only right now with a partner that uh, has organized an innovative health outreach program uh, and has developed customized software uh, designed to improve record keeping at local uh, health centers, which in turn has improved uh, outreach to uh, mothers with newborn babies. We also work with uh, universities and technical schools across the country and provide students of dentistry, dental hygiene, dental assisting and optometry with opportunities to participate in our brigades. And so now for a just bit of an in-depth look at uh, some of our projects involving technology. Since 2003, we've been working in Nicaragua focusing on people's empowerment, democratic ownership and participation with regards to water management. And here we've invested more than $2.5 million providing potable water infrastructure and, and training female-headed water committees in the management and sustainable preservation of this precious resource. So as a result here, uh, over 150,000 people have access to potable water, which they manage locally in this drought-stricken region, which is highly vulnerable to climate change. Our latest project in Nicaragua involves the distribution of technology and provides technical training so that water committees can manage their water resource cooperatively with the various levels of government so that they can advocate for their rights to water and so that they can hold their governments accountable for water provision to this vulnerable population which is facing increasing water scarcity. So due to our alliance with the 60 Million Girls Foundation, we, uh, and the lessons we are learning every day around the deployment of technology in the field, we've redesigned this project to uh, employ the Rachel hardware and uh, put a load all of our training components that we've developed for water committees uh, onto this uh, sort of a redesigned mobile learning lab uh, and distributing tablets and smartphones and the, and the mobile learning lab to actually train all the water committees uh, and then, of course, we're very excited about the opportunity to make that all open source so that everybody can have access to those uh, materials in the future. So that's just another value-added impact of a partnership with 60 Million Girls, which has sort of influenced our work uh, beyond the scope of their funding. So just to go quickly into a couple of the projects that 60 Million Girls is supporting with Change for Children, our 2019 project will be uh, conducted in Guatemala and there we work in the in the western highlands in Comitancio uh, with the Mayan Mam indigenous people. So we work on a number of initiatives there in agriculture and also in education. Uh, and our 2019 project in partnership with 60 Million Girls will see the mobile learning lab distributed here to primary and secondary schools and will also conduct research on curriculum development necessary to improve student performance in this area. So we're very excited about that. And now uh, Colette is going to provide you with a little more uh, information about our foray into the deployment of Raspberry Pi in this region. So we're going to journey into the rainforest for a few moments here. Last summer I was on that teacher brigade with the ATA to go to Boswas, Nicaragua. Myself and four other Alberta teachers were part of the teacher brigade with the Change for Children. Our goal was to su support the professional development of local teachers, but also look to see what we might be able to do in the future. So here you can see a typical classroom. Uh, this is one of the schools built by Change for Children about six years ago. The desks are often moved from classroom to classroom or sometimes even taken home. Um, there are very few resources. The teachers haven't received any type of professional development in over four years prior to our work there last summer. Here you can see primary students starting the day with a singing game, um, which is a great way to engage and teach students when you have no resources. We did see many girls in schools in Basawas. Um, this is no doubt a result of the work that Change for Children and 60 Million Girls have done in the region by providing infrastructure for communities so that girls do not have to travel those long distances, unsafe distances to attend school. 
However, the barrier to uh, girls' education goes beyond access to schools. It includes responsibilities at home and gender-biased social expectations. So in short, girls have more work to do. This influences their attendance and their achievement. Technology was not part of the initial plan for this project um, that was funded by 60 million girls, but when the opportunity to trial Rachel, the offline technology um, with the ATA grade, we jumped on it. What does tech look like when you have no electricity, no Wi-Fi, and limited resources? We brought our own Raspberry Pi. We loaded um, the SD card with Rachel in Spanish. We brought a battery. We brought a netbook and a solar charger. I had a second SD card with uh, Rachel in English, so I had some things to plan with in my own language. We wrote instructions in Spanish um, so that the principal could learn how to do it himself, and then he had to teach a teacher, who then had to teach the next teacher, and then we were there to provide coaching as they were teaching each other. One teacher did actually have a smartphone, so we also modeled how they could access that technology with a smartphone. As we allowed teachers to explore the elements of Rachel, it became really apparent uh, the benefit of this technology. It was mentioned earlier today as well. The teachers could read about the content that they taught using the databases on Rachel. So, for example, you might watch the Khan Academy videos and, one, learn what the actual formula, correct formula is, but also uh, have a model of how to teach that. It became really apparent that the small amount of technology that we brought with us was not ideal to model to teachers how to use this technology in our short time there. I did load up an activity um, from Rachel and allowed any student who wanted to try it a turn. And as you can see, I was quite popular. Um, but so too were the teachers that brought hands-on manipulatives, it should be noted. We also painted tech teaching supports on the walls and chalkboards. Until this project, teachers in this community moved from classroom to classroom, rather having students move from classroom to classroom in the secondary. By painting subject-specific diagrams on the classroom walls, um, we allowed teachers to claim their own classroom, and it was beginning their journey of building a collection of resources to use in their teaching. So in a community um, where there are not many locked doors, storage obviously becomes a concern. This particular community had a really well-managed library. And so the technology that could be kept here, could be signed out, is certainly an option. If technology becomes part of instruction in the regions in Basawas, construction of schools will need to accommodate this change of practice. So there are still some questions um, we need to be, to be solved about the long-term needs of bringing tech to Basawas. The climate is not great for electronics. This will have an impact on storage concerns. Security of property and a sign-out system that fits cultural norms of the community needs to be considered. How communities access help for problem solving when things break down will need to be explored. It can be an over a 12-hour boat ride for some communities to the nearest town, which itself has limited resources. As well, there needs to be a plan for getting updated Rachel content to Basawas when those updates can, uh, occur. Two of the girls shown in this image plan to become doctors, they told us. Their belief in such a future was made possible by the education that they received and will continue to receive um, because of the secondary school that has been built in their community. I'm looking forward to applying what I learned today and in Nicaragua when I go to Guatemala this summer. As a precursor to the 60 Million Girls Project and the Change for Children in ATA Brigade going there this summer, um, we will be working to provide professional development to teachers in marginalized communities in the municipality of Comentencio in Guatemala's Western Highlands. We will be bringing a mobile learning lab to this region to field test um, for its deployment in 2019. Thank you.